Hello, everybody. The one viewer I have, and anyone in YouTube land. It feels like it's been forever. It's, in fact, been a whole week. I skipped Thursday's stream because... Uh, my hand got all messed up and sprained somehow, and I... It was hard to use the mouse, so I figured I'd just skip Thursday and come back today. I don't even remember what I was doing last week. But... First of all, how's my volume? Hello, Slat Studio. Nice to see you. What I did do uh, since Thursday, off stream, was uh, take a look at the reflection sprites and try to make reflections of each swimming uh, view. So we have regular walking, and then we have wading, and then deep wading, and then swimming. Sorry, and um, I decided I'm not going to reflect the swimming one. I figured there'd be too much water around him, and it didn't need to reflect. So I did make reflections of... And there's also uh, a section on the picture... Where are we? Which one was it again? Nine. Uh, when, you're, when you're in a little ways... Let me just extend this out. When you're in the blue, he wades in with to his ankles, and instead of having an alternate view, this ankle view kind of appears on top of his feet. I don't reflect this, I just reflect this. So I only made two extra views, the wading and the wading deep, which are up here in 80, 81, 82 and 83. I also did 83 and 84, or 8, sorry. 80, 81, 83 and 84, and 86 and 87. I did, I doubled up on these because what was happening, I'll show it to you. So, there's Graham's reflection. He wades deep. If I slow this down, you can catch it. See how it's lagging behind? And there's a slight flicker when... And when you stop, it kind of jumps. So what's going on there is... Uh, volume sounds good. Good! I don't remember what I was doing last week either. <laughs> yeah. So, the code to have the reflection animation copy Ego, or Graham's, it's called Ego in the game scripts, or Graham's exact frames, loop and cells, of his animation, it lags behind uh, every other cycle or something, and it's not a cycle, I guess, but... So, I'm not sure how I can fix that, or even if it... Whoops. Or even if it's possible. But if you're playing at a fast enough speed, it's not really recognizable. Although when you stop, he kind of jumps. What's happening there is... Because he lags behind... Um, and this is something Sierra wouldn't have to worry about. Because in King's Quest 1, the only reflection you see is when he's walking across the bridge. Right? On a Castle Daventry. And... Uh, And so it's, it's far enough away, like from the bridge to the water, the moat's a little ways underneath the bridge, that you don't really see the discrepancy. So that's probably why they didn't do this here. So what I had to do is make doubles, because it lags behind. I had to change the origin point on the walking animation so that when he's walking, he syncs up perfectly. But when he stops, he becomes one frame ahead because it's catching up. See what I'm saying? So I had to make another version of the view with a different origin point, so it snaps back and and it matches up perfectly. So actually when he's walking, it's one view, and when I stop, it changes the reflection view, and that's why there's that slight flicker. Now I could probably chalk that up to, well, it's kind of slightly rippling water, maybe it's kind of a water effect. 
kind of the result of his movement and then stopping. I don't know. Most people play these games at a high speed anyway. But you can see, um, if I slow this right down. Can't kind of tell, can't tell because maybe I'll go here. When I'm, hang on a sec. Let's do it right here. So you can see where he's walking, he's perfectly matched up. Even though he's behind, because his origin point is one pixel, actually two pixels ahead. Uh, he matches up perfectly, and when I stop, he matches up again because I have to account for that flicker. Now, it's e it's not as visible when I stop when I'm just waiting with, into my ankles because it's a completely different sprite. But when I'm waiting deep, deeper to my knees, it's the same sprite because he doesn't have a standing sprite in the water when he's waiting. So you can see that flicker, and you can see the... The sprite snap back because I'm changing views and it's using a different origin point and it moves it back two pixels so it matches up and the reflection matches perfectly. Are you mirroring in the do it method? Yes. I am it's not even this is just a prop, it's not even an actor. Actors can move by themselves, props can't, but props can animate, so I'm just updating the the, the reflection props uh, loop and cell values uh, based on egos. So it's happening behind so it, it, yeah it's like that I'm not sure if I could account for that or fix that or not but for now I'm just gonna leave it maybe uh, chalk it up to something I can polish later on down the road as a finishing touch when this most of the game is done maybe can you set the new image either one pixel left or right depending on the direction of ego uh, that's a good point but there's still gonna be that delay between between when it checks what ego's position and loop and cell is, and when it when it sets the uh, prop uh, cell and loops and position too, there's still going to be that delay. Greetings, welcome RMV74. Nice to see you. Delay isn't as bad as the snapback. Yeah, what I could do is is. Uh, is leave it at, uh, instead of having two views, just have one and then leave the position as the origin position the same as Ego's. And when you walk, it'll be slightly behind. It's only really noticeable left and right because it drags across the screen. But when you go up and down, you can't really notice that it's doing that. It's just, it's just when it goes left and right. That's still gonna happen. And then, and so the, so the walking animation won't match up perfectly with the origin points the same, but when I stop, it'll catch up and sit, and, uh, sit. Actually, no, the, the, the reflection would be ahead. I, there's probably a way I, yeah, if I leave it behind, if I leave the reflection behind, and then when he stops, the reflection will catch up and, and go exactly to his position instead of going forward and back. So... Maybe I'll try that. Let's just let's just go with that. Uh, nine. No, not nine, because this is the water reflection region script. So this is what I got here. I have to do it on in it and do it because uh, when you first when you first walk into the room, whoops, I can't do de debug. Uh, nine. When you first go into the room, I guess it doesn't matter. I don't really need to do that. What I, what was happening was I was teleporting in, and as soon as you walk in, uh, let's let's go from here actually. So, see that see that uh, flicker that happened there? Because it's setting the the view, but it's it's not copying his orientation the way he's facing until like a, a cycle after. So there's a flicker there. You can see he was looking right for a second, even though Graham never looked right. Because uh, in the Graham reflect prop initialization in instance initialization here, he's just set to automatically go to loop zero, cell zero. So again, not a problem with uh, 
King's Quest 1 because he's so far away and he's not always reflecting in the water and he's so far away from the surface of the water I mean like let's uh let's check it out just real quick um wait King's Quest 1 going on okay that didn't respond just a second let's take a look Oh, wait, there is reflection here. But you can see the same flickering is happening. If we slow it down. See, it is a hair behind. When Graham turns, the reflection follows shortly after. But because it's so far away, you don't notice it. And the game speed is high enough, too, that you just... But because, in my scene, the, the reflection is so close to Graham, he's walking in the water, it's, it's a lot more noticeable. Also, there's this rippling water around where he's going to be walking. I, I think this was all intentional, so you wouldn't notice these things. So... Yeah, so even though I put that in initialization, it didn't solve that flicker issue at all. Unless I put the initialization in each of these. Ignore actors hide. Okay, yeah. If I cut out the initialization here and add it to each state here, maybe? I don't know if that's going to work. This is only going to happen once, so I can initialize it once every time here. Okay, we go up. Nope, still happening. It takes a second for it to catch up. And since I can appear from any direction, like, even if I appear from the right here, look at that. It takes a second to update its priority, even. So, when it's first initialized... Dang. All these little issues. Um, set the Y. Where is the Y set? Set priority. One less than ego. I'm going to put that right in there. Will that work? Okay, that seems to have caused, fixed it. Okay, so it sets its priority before it's even drawn. And that's what I want. I can also set it, set its loop and cell before it's even drawn. That's what I need to be doing here. So in the do it method, I've got cell and loop. I should add this to, to uh, up here. Maybe that'll solve my problem. Um, might as well just go to room two. Approach from the above. There we go. It still messed up the priority, though, interestingly enough. But it doesn't do that here. Oh, that's annoying. You add transparent ripples to the reflection prop, it might not be that noticeable. Yeah, the only problem is I can't animate it because when he's walking and standing, they're two different animations. I, 
basically the walking is matching the cell of... I suppose I could make another view where... Uh, oh, that would be a lot, though. Where each frame of the walking animation would be a loop in itself. Every single frame. So that would be like dozens and dozens of frames which would animate a rippling effect on top while he's not moving. Because again, while I have a standing still view reflection when he's ankle deep, once he gets knee deep, it just freezes his walking. And so I can't have it animating unless I do a complete animating loop per frame of that's going to be frozen. That's going to be a lot. Back in the Back in the day, someone asked why the reflection was a little off, because the water is rippling. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm gonna get rid of this bouncing effect here. Is, if so, if he stopped, so I'm just gonna... I don't need to do if stopped, except for 81 and 80. So, if I... Oh yeah, I can't do those style comments. Oh, wrong one. This one needs to be in that one. It can't be. What happens now? Alright, so. Oh, he's still snapping back. Look at that. Oh, yeah, because this is the interview. I keep. This, I was struggling for like a half hour, 45 minutes on, on a problem. Because what I was changing here wasn't affecting the game. And I forgot that I've, I've done this code in two places the init, the init method, and the do it method. And I wasn't actually changing it in the do it method. I was pulling my hair out. Stupid little things. Okay. Right, let's just go straight to nine. Okay. All right. Now, see there, he's not flickering anymore. But when he stops, he his reflection is ahead of him. So what I'm gonna do instead is comment out that one. Leave eighty-six. Comment out eighty-four. Get eighty-seven. That there. Alright, so now the walking animation doesn't sync up. You see, it's two pixels behind him. But when I stop, he doesn't flicker and he matches up. So that might be a compromise I'll just have to make. Maybe. Or even change it to uh, one pixel difference. So when he stops, he's one. There's reflections one pixel ahead, but when he walks, he's one pixel behind. Because two pixels is quite a difference. But I have to do that for every frame. I don't know. What do you think? Unless I should just go all out and make stopping animations for when he's waiting deep. Because I don't believe King's Quest One does that. to some water. There's water over here. I know most of the Daventry map in King's Quest 1 off by heart, but a couple places... But I generally know where there's some water. Okay, so here he wades. Yeah. So in King's Quest 1, he doesn't have a standing animate, standing uh, view separate for when he's standing idle while he's wading in the water. And when he's swimming, he just keeps animating. He doesn't stop animating. That's only when he's w when he's waiting. So 
So again, this is like polishing stuff. I think it's pretty good right now. Maybe I'll just leave it like this. Um, but I do want to sort out that priority issue. It's really strange that he's, uh, that when he comes in from the top, you can see everything. But when he comes from the side, he's hidden properly. The other thing I haven't done yet is the uh, Z animation, Z walking animation.
There we go. Can you hear me now? That was weird. I have no idea how long I've been silent. Thanks for telling me that, Critical Buzz. I have no idea how long I've been silent. Okay. So I was just describing how I was going to copy the, uh... When Graham walks up the hill on King's Quest 1 here, uh, he'll walk back down on the other side, like, as if he's walking down on the other side of the hill. And then the screen transitions. And so that's why this green priority mask is here, because as you can see, the green line is in between this area. So you're only drawn behind a, a priority color if you're above that priority color's line. So we're, you're drawn behind this blue tree because it's above the blue line right here. Let me just get a better view. So this is the blue range right here. Anything drawn in this blue range will be drawn on top of anything blue, but anything above it will be drawn behind it. So this green, you can't actually reach its limit. Uh, it's above the green line, and that by that point, you're transitioning to the next green. But they've scripted it so that he walks up and then down again, and his priority and, and uh, Y coordinate stay the same, but his Z coordinate changes, and he's it's like a pseudo imaginary third uh, coordinate, X, Y, and Z. And you can kind of fake uh, perspective, and so that's why he's drawn behind the green here. And we were just looking at that in the control colors here. So when he hits the blue and hits the black again, he starts being drawn, uh, his Z coordinate changes, and he starts, he starts being drawn lower on the screen. And then when he hits the green, the screen transitions. So it's pretty complicated, and I was just looking at how I was going to copy that. Um, all of, and then I ran into these oh, all these instances here. I was saying it was nice to be able to go into this tree and you can just jump to any object very quickly for what you need. And I was just making a note that all these, like pine tree all up to 20 and then tree up to 13, uh, pine tree 23 actually, these are cl mouse click events. So it's drawing a rectangle on the screen for where you can click. Like, despite being an EGA parser game, you, there's still a bit of point and click to this. I mean, obviously you can left click to walk around, but you can also right click to look at things specifically. That's all you can do. There's no cycling through different icons like in VGA SCI games, King's Quest V and such, but you can right click to look at certain objects and I'll show you that. And I'll be replicating that in King's Quest II as well. Uh, so... Still got a mic. So here, if I right click, it'll, it'll it's as if I typed look at portcullis or look at guards. Look at can't do the sea monster. It's, it doesn't work for anything that moves around the screen or, or, or sprites, but it will work for regions. Beautiful urns. Castle walls are carpeted with thick tangled vines. They're not in a VGA game. Uh, Hotspots like that would be in control colors, I, th I believe. And based on views, obviously. The guards protect... Well, I, it probably works for views as well. But anyway, that's what these instances are here. Pine Tree of New Feature. This might not be a proper name when it decompiled. It, it sometimes gets the names wrong of some objects, but... So it's, it's saying the position is here and here. Uh, and this is the noun. <laughs> It still had rudimentary uh, noun support. 4173, I'm not sure what that means. But then this NS top, left, bottom, right, that is the rectangular coordinates for each of the rectangle points for that uh, portion of the screen that you can right click on to look at. And then description 4216 right here would be the result. Anywho, we were looking at Climb Hill. This is the script that triggers uh, when he climbs over the hill and is drawn behind it. <clears throat> so, we got method chain state. So, again, decompiling doesn't isn't perfect. We got procedure 0, 2. So this means it doesn't have a name for this procedure, but it's in script 0, and it's the second procedure on that, uh, that script's list. So I have to jump to that definition in script zero, which is the main script. The brains of the whole game is script zero, much like object zero. 
Never knew about the right-click and SCI text parser games. Yeah, all, not all of them. So King's Quest 4 was the first one, and then Police Quest 2, Space Quest 3. Those ones don't have that function, but King's Quest 1 SCI does. Uh, Quest for Glory 2 does. They're both SCI 01 games, actually, which might be the reason. Um, I'm not sure how many others. Colonel's Bequest does. That's an SCI 0 game, and that can do it. Colonel's Bequest, Conquest of Camelot, I believe, does it. So the the later SEGA uh, parser games can do it. Not the earliest ones. But yeah, it was, it was kind of fun that I, when I discovered that as well. So procedure two, here we go. User can control. What does that mean? I'll have to check out the user. Can control, can input. Okay, so it's saying uh, procedure two makes it so that the, com the player cannot control the character and cannot type in an input or interact with the game. So it's kind of like a mini uh, cinematic sequence, scripted sequence. So as soon as you hit that point, he'll start walking on the other end of the hill. You can't stop him and he'll transition to the next screen. You can't even type at that point just for that little half a second of him going over the hill. And it sets motion to zero. That's interesting. Global one, set cursor. Okay, so it changes to a weight cursor. Uh, cursor 997 is the loading cursor, yep. So it tells you, it, you can't control him, you can't type. And it does the crown cursor to know to let you know it's loading. Got it. Menu bar state zero, which means you can't interact with the menu bar. And then global 103 assigns to one. What is global 103? Interesting. I don't know what it is. That's the problem with decompiling. It could be anything. Global 103. But I can look throughout the game. Okay, there's only one place where it's actually used. And that's right here. Procedure 2 and Procedure 3. Global 103 must... Uh... Oh, it's used in one place in the game, but these procedures obviously are used everywhere. Okay, I... so what this is, Procedure 2 is take control away from the player. It's a... It tells the player it's a scripted sequence, and Procedure 3 gives control back. So user can control one, can input one, changes the cursor back if, if we have mouse support which is a clever thing they programmed. If, you, if your computer didn't have a mouse, uh, this would be superfluous. There'd be no point in this. So if you have a mouse, it changes it back to cursor uh, 999, which is the pointer. Change the menu bar state back to uh, usable, and then assigns a global variable, which tracks whether the, the game is controlling or the player is controlling. So it does all that in these handy procedures right here. So that's what those two are. And I believe those are actually named here in my own main script from the from the SCI0 template game. So one of I don't have near as many global variables, but Okay, so G program control states whether the program has control or the user. Is there a player control? Okay, yeah. That's the name. Public procedures. Player control. Procedure player control. User can control true. Can input true. Set motion null, which is zero, which is the same as the other one. But here it doesn't do the uh, the cursor stuff. So we have program control, procedure, and player control. Those are the same procedures, almost, as here. I, I could probably add these actually to my own. So it's, it's setting the global variable and the menu bar state as well as the cursor in addition to whether it control, can control and the motion set to zero or not. Cool. So back here, we, we see that it's, it's setting it to uh, program control. And then it sets G egos legal bits. That's, I wonder what that means. That's probably explained in the documentation. It sets his loop to three, which is north facing, and priority to one. So at all points, at all positions, he's going to be set to priority one and not follow the priority lines on the screen, which is, allows him to be drawn behind 
So this isn't Z coordinate stuff at all. However, hey, gotta go to sleep. It's 12:37 a.m. here in Australia. Oh wow! Well, have a good sleep, my friend. Thanks for joining so late. You can catch the vod later if you like. Any Sierra fans come join me at Sierra Gaming World Facebook group. Good night. Yes, I'm a member there as well. So join the Sierra Gaming World Facebook group, everybody. If you're a fan of Sierra games, check it out. Okay. That music was a little loud. Okay, so procedure two, take control from the player. And then we do have procedure one and procedure three. Which, and then after that it changes to the new room, which is the room north of us. And then disposes itself. The script, that is. So procedure one and three, what are those? Procedure one right here. Looper. Grouper. Interesting. Stopwalk. Little bits. Oh, this is doing some funky stuff here. Setup actor. That's what it is. So, in the, the template game, the person who designed the template game, in this case it was Brian Provinciano, who based the template game initially in SCI Studio on Leisure Suit Larry 3. That's what it's based on. And so he's kind of deobfuscated all of this, all of the code here, which does not decompile in uh, King's Quest 1. You see, it's just called Procedure 0 underscore 1, which means the first procedure in script 0. So that is Setup Ego. It looks a little different than mine, though. Mine's a little simpler. I wonder if the effect is the same. Set up ego, the public procedures. Okay, so we have set up ego and set up actor. Set up ego is set up actor. Sometimes you just gotta look at this to make some sense of it. Setup Ego is the procedure you call uh, in the beginning of every room, I think. Yeah, Setup Ego. This always has to be called in every room that Ego is going to be in. If this isn't here, Ego will not be there. And then uh, afterward, or you can do it at any point in the init method. See, everything that happens in the init method happens when the room is first loaded, that one room. So at the beginning of this room, the first room in the game, uh, it initializes uh, itself, the room itself. It sets the script to room script, which you can set the script to any script. In this case, it's the room script. It sets uh, it sets the eagle's position based on which previous room number he came from. So if he came from the north, it's going to put ego at 220 by 38 and set his loop to two, which is south view facing. So if he comes from the north, he wants to, he, need, he needs to be facing south uh, and be at these coordinates specifically. That's how I have it set up. Uh, if he comes from the east, he's, he's going to be positioned at 310, but it's going to copy Ego's Y coordinate from whatever room he was just in. So whatever room on the screen is going to copy it from that position, and then he'll be west facing loop one. West is a little more complicated because if he came from the west, he came from the water. So if Ego's Y position is greater or equal to 127, which would be down here, right here, which just so happens to be in the red. He will be positioned exactly here and have this loop. And if he's less than or equal to 70, he'll be positioned at 1065. 
which is 65 is up here. So he's if he comes from the left, he's going to be in between in the red. He won't come from here. Otherwise, just position him at 10 and whatever why he was at. So that's that's saying that if he if he came in from the from the previous room above the red, you can see he can't actually be here. It's white. He'll be automatically snap back to this position. Otherwise, it'll copy it. And uh, and if he ends up below the red, it'll snap him into the red. And then, yeah. So that's how that handles that. And after it sets the position, and uh, else, else means if he came from north, east, west, or south, handle those specific circumstances. Otherwise, if he came from any other room. Uh, draw the picture with a checkerboard uh, effect, which is uh, kind of like the pixely, which is similar to what Kings Plus One did when you first start the game. It pixels out. And then position him exactly here, which is the place where he starts at the beginning of the game, right about here. So if he comes from the introduction or the menu, the main title menu basically, this is how it's going to appear. Then it sets up the ego. Then it's then the ego's initialized and drawn on the screen. If he if previous room number is 122, which is I think swimming in the water, set his animation to be stop swim. So he's uh, he's swimming. He's not walking. And then it adds a region. So in the main script, I would like to copy the behavior as closely as possible for this walking over the hill thing. So, <clears throat> this is set up ego. It's a little more complicated than mine. And I'm not sure exactly what all it's doing differently, but it's kind of a mix of set up ego and set up actor. Anyway. So we have procedure two and procedure three. So, whoops. What I've done for when the computer takes over is manually set the menu bar state to unavailable, change the cursor, and change the global variable all manually. But I can just set it all into the public procedures. Why wouldn't I do that? Maybe I should do that. Yeah, it's an in intro, it's in room three. So this is when you open the mailbox at grandma's house. I set it to program control. I set the global variable for program control to true. And then I animate the mailbox opening. And then I return player control in the next state. So. I don't have to do that, but I'd have to go through every single if time where I've evoked program and player control and change it back. I'll leave it for now. But what we're doing is essentially the same thing. So in room nine. So that's a scripted sequence, the way they did it, King's Quest 1. What I want to do is use a Z coordinate in mine. Let's see. So this whole hill, I might not be able to do this. What I ended up doing was just blocking his ability to pass through. See that? So if I have Eagle on the screen... Um, control lines. He just can't walk past that. Let's look at uh, another game that does have that ability. 
believe Space Quest 3 has it when you're on Flea Butt. Maybe I could glean something from that. Here's some dunes right here. Green with uh, the monster in the background. I think it's here, it's just not on the actual background. Okay, so here. It's got certain priorities set, if that makes sense. The purple is about drawn below the purple line. The red is way up there. This green line means something. Oh, I didn't uh, decompile this game. Well, let's decompile it. Here's how you decompile a Sierra game, by the way. Select all. Redecompile when globals change. So when the names change, it redecompiles and sets the names correctly. So you want that checked. Substitute text resource tuples for strings. I'm not going to do that. Oh! So it's going to pull the met text from the text resources instead of just referencing the text resource. So it'll put the actual strings in the script instead of just referencing by number. Referencing them by number. I'm not going to do that. Just decompile. It goes through everything. It's pretty smart. So overall byte count success rate 98%. It's usually pretty high like that. 1,495 of 1,502 functions successfully decompiled. So the remaining uh, seven functions will revert back to uh, assembly because it can't figure out how to display them in proper syntax. So that's done. Now let's look here. Flash, that's, that's going to be lightning. Yeah, lightning, thunder, flash. Thought I might use a different palette for the flash. Um, so we're looking for control colors. Observe control two. Where are we in? The initialization method. Okay, if E goes on control color is zero, which is black. E goes on control color zero. No, assign local zero. The result of this. Condition this plus this this bit. And Okay, then switch. Yeah, that'll take some understanding. G go ignore control four. Global one sixteen. This is really obfuscated. So there, it's pretty complicated to do what I'm thinking. I might leave it to later. Leave it as a polishing step at the end when I really have time to s I might have to do this off stream too whenever I get to this in the future I don't know how long I'll be streaming this but as long as people are interested, still interested uh, I'll still be here but this is something I'm going to have to think about off screen because it's boring to watch somebody think okay back to King's Quest 1 So we're pretty much done with this, I think, for now. I think that's as good as it's going to get. I 
it's not bad, really. I mean, I'm not complaining. After that. Alright, what's next then? Get about another hour or so left. Let's see. What else did I want to do? I suppose... I can do the water reflections on another screen that has water in it. I did it here. So this calls the uh, water reflection region script. This is room 13. You can see it works. But, and even the, the deep wading up to your waist, it works. You see it really lags behind there. But, he's reflected everywhere. We gotta do the same thing I did to this other screen. For priority lines. So, let's do that. I just gotta color in, fill in each line that's not in the water. So now that I figured it out, it should be a lot easier to do. lines right here have to be. So this should be blue. This should be light green. This should be cyan. Looks like we're going back to green. Lime green. Maybe I'll just leave that and fix that later. But that needs to be green. That could be cyan. There. To the priority. I really don't like that tree. I gotta redo that. So we go back up to here. This would be gray. Fix those a little bit later. It's gonna be gray. Back to brown. again. A bit tedious. And then it's going to be purple. Back to the tree.
I just have to fill it in now. Oh, and I guess the horizon line up here. Now on this screen, I could make it so once it gets above a certain priority color's line, it stops drawing the reflection entirely, it just hides it. But that's not going to be the same between every room. Like, we've run out of priority colors now up here. Which means Eagle is going to be drawn behind whatever is there as well. Now, the way I solved this in the other room was to cut the horizon off right there. So anything above the blue line, the room just changes. So you can see I made it all purple, which means it'll change rooms instead of have, being able to walk all the way up here. So I'm probably going to have to do it to do that again right here. Alright, let's go to priority, color some things in. Uh oh, that's messed up. That should not be. black pixel. down here let's do these priority lines I prefer to get, keep music without uh, lyrics, just so it's not distracting. There we go.
there. And then we need gray. Skip dark gray entirely. Finish the lines there. here. That red line there shouldn't be there. Preliminary is done. Actually, I didn't do any shoreline overlap, so that's perfect. Let's try it. Pick room 13.
priority still working as it should. Oh. Does that really block the whole... Interesting. Oh, he barely has enough room to walk under that bush. He just walks in front of it. Interesting. Same problem with uh, the, the reflection needing to go away from him, kind of over that little hump. I might just ignore that. That might be too complicated to do. Oh, I need some... Uh, yes. I have to make this reflection. And this reflection, incidentally... Yep. Okay. Let's do that. Next thing. One priority less than what it's reflected as. Okay. Where did I color in those reflections? color less than what it is. Uh, this is brown, so it's got to be purple. Reflection teal. This needs to be changed. Teal. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Not that. Just the reflection. That. We're starting right there. Teal. Okay. I think that's good. Oh no, there's a shadow and then there's a reflection. <sighs> Can't do the shadow, just the reflection. Shadow, that's the reflection.
try it. Testing. Here we have a stump. We're correctly drawn in front of it, but when we go up here, we're drawn behind it. In the reflection as well. That's the coolest part about this. Now, even here, you can see where you are from your reflection. Okay, good. Drawn behind the rock. Oh, look at that. Blocks right up to there. That's fair enough, I suppose. And then here I'm drawn on top of it. I like it. Maybe for this reflection of the land here, I will make that so it's also one less. Or just have it block from there. Victory, yes. So that reflection of the land there. Let's do that. in the reflection. Oh, it's not red. It's, it's red, red. Red, red. I did the wrong color. See how that looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. He's just drawn behind the reflection of the water, of the land in the water. Just drawn behind. Keep it simple. Don't get too complicated. It looks all right. If I get right down to it, it's too close to notice. I'll walk on top there, sure. 
I'll allow it. Maybe I'll just do the same. I'm happy. Next. Done this one. This one. Let's do this one. This will be quick. It's fairly small. Well, we do have some overlap though of the ground. I'll do that next time. I don't want to do another whole screen of that right now. Let's see, what else do I want to do here? screen being unfinished like I've started it and haven't finished it I started. I kind of stopped short because I, I didn't really know how to do this tree. From what I recall. These trees are kind of like dead. I did most of the ground here and the rocks. It's basically... Because you have to go front to back instead of back to front like you might in Photoshop. Because whatever's drawn on top has to be drawn first. So there's these rocks I need to do, and then these trees back here. And I kind of exaggerated the height of those rocks there, because it's a different... These ones are kind of kept the same though. I think I didn't draw these rocks yet because I wasn't sure how much space I wanted to have here to walk through and whatnot. I'm gonna hold off on this because that tree. through the game. Maybe there's something I can program. Okay, I could probably try to figure out this. So, I said this on the first stream I did of this running through the game. Uh, there's, I can't do get basket of goodies. It doesn't work. I can't even do basket or goodies, which I should be able to do. I have to do goodies basket. So let's take a look at that script. Take basket goodies, basket goodies. See, it should accept basket or goodies, but it's not. Everything separated by a comma is a, an or. But it's not. Get rid of this. 
this quick. Why does it let me if I have nothing else there? Goodies. Goodies. Okay, so I accepted that. Let's start over. again but when I do basket of goodies that's when it all falls apart so I still don't really understand the rules of the parser quite yet entirely it's a bit of a complicated beast get goodies you can't take that Get basket of goodies. It's not working. Let's look up a bit of that. Shops are all closed again, so I couldn't get my hair cut. It's been, I think it's been seven months since I had a haircut. It's way too long. It's kind of annoying me. Dedicated word series with noun phrases. Right. That's not what I'm looking for. There is a thread on the SCI programming forums. SCIprogramming.com slash community for anyone who wants to get in on the conversations. goes into one guy totally really goes into the said statements just gotta find it
Vocabulary file here. Basket food, goodies. Oh, they're the same word. I don't need this. Basket and goodies is the same thing in this game. Will that work? Let's just save here. Get basket. Goodies. It's weird. As long as this is here, it nullifies this. Maybe this is impossible because they're the same word. Maybe they should be different words. Is that what's going on here? Basket and goodie should be different words. Now. Basket is a noun. Oh, maybe I have to recompile everything. Because I have a new vocab now. Basket goodies. How does that work?
Okay. Get basket goodies, apparently. Apparently that'll work. To, 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 I'll have to do, excuse me, two different said statements. Take basket goodies. But I'll also have to do. Take basket of goodies, or goodies basket, which is an adjective. So goodies has to be an adjective, is it? It's not. Spec. Get basket of goodies. That works. Get basket. That works. So all that's screwing up is get goodies. I'll have to do three entirely different ones. goodies. I think I just may have solved it. Okay. Get basket. Success. Get goodies. It doesn't like that. Bad sets back. Hit return or continue. Slash 69. It's magic reference 8. Doesn't like it. Maybe goodies should be... First, then basket. Basket of goodies. Get basket. Get goodies. It doesn't like it. Why? It's. It keeps getting hicked up on. Uh, Hiccuping on this. Swimming basket is a noun and goodies is a noun. Get slash basket slash goodies will respond to get basket of goodies. Goodies is also a qualifying adjective, then get slash basket less than goodies will respond to get goodies basket. But get rid of this now.
shouldn't have worked. What? <laughs> Goody's basket should not have worked. How did that work? Get Goody's work. Get Goody's basket should not work. But it does. That works too! Okay. So the only problem is... I can't type get goodies. Or get food. Get basket of food. So... I need to make it allow... Get food. Okay, and I'm gonna have to take off in about five minutes. But let's try one more attempt at this. Goodies is there. This is right there, why isn't it working? can't take it. It's literally right here. It won't let me do it. So what if I take this out? Just goodies. It's still gonna have a problem with that. Can't take it. Nothing works. It's just not accepting goodies at all as an option. Shall I get rid of its qualifying adjective? It shouldn't matter if it can be both. Okay, it's a qualifying adjective. But if it's also a noun, it shouldn't matter. That's irritating. So will this allow me to do everything now? That will be a bad said spec. Okay, so get basket. Works. Get goodies. Works. Get goodies basket. Get basket of goodies. Alright, as long as it works, I'm happy. Finally, this one problem has been plaguing me for almost the entire length of time that I've been working on this game. Get basket of goodies. Holy cow. Well, that's a good point of victory to end on today. I gotta start work a little early today, so... Thank you for joining me. I know it's been a while. I'll be back for sure this time. Barring any other uh, personal injuries or disasters. Uh, Nine o'clock... Thursday morning, central time. I'll be going for about two hours or so. So. Yeah. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.